there. This video is going to show you how to use scatter plots and regression analysis in Microsoft Excel 2016 to look at the relationship between two variables and to make predictions based on relationships between two variables. So in this particular video, we are still looking at the sports shoe data, and you can see each row represents one customer, and each column represents a variable that was measured. And for this particular exercise, we are only going to focus on the number of Nikes, age, and annual income. So I'm just going to go ahead and, like I just demonstrated, click on the letter above each variable then you can either hit copy up here or control C to copy. See the happy dancing line, that means you did it right. Go open up a new sheet or tab, then control V or paste to paste. So it's important to note that to create a scatter diagram or a scatter plot in Microsoft Excel, your two variables need to be next to each other in the data. So from here, we couldn't do a scatter plot or scatter diagram looking at age and number of Nikes together. We would have to organize the data to do that. Also be mindful when you organize your data that the first column is your X variable or your pseudo independent variable or what you're really wanting to look at as a potential predictor of the other variable which should be in the column next to it. So whatever you put in the first column that will be the basis for your X axis and then whatever's in the second column will be the basis for your Y or your vertical axis. So let's first start off by doing a scatter plot for number of Nikes and in income. And if that relationship appears to be strong, we'll move on to look at regression analyses. You only do regression or make predictions using regression when the relationship between your two variables is, you know, strong ish. If it's weak, there's no need to do that because your predictions aren't going to be very good anyway. So let's go ahead and organize our data so that we have Nike and income. And in this particular case, I think that income is going to be a predictor of how many pair of Nikes you have. So I'm going to just keep this data in its original form here and then just copy and go over here and paste. So control C to copy, control V to paste. Number of Nikes is going to be my Y variable. So just highlight that, control C to copy, and then control V to paste. So let's go ahead and do a scatter diagram to see if there's any kind of relationship between annual income and Nike. I would assume that since Nikes aren't really cheap, that um, people who have a higher income will tend to have more Nikes. But who knows? Let's look at the data. So you're going to go, you're going to highlight your two variables, then you're going to click insert, and then you're going to see all these different charts here. I'm going to go ahead and select this one that has the little dots. That is your scatter. So click that, and let's just go with this option for now, this first option. Let's make some edits before we critique the relationship here. So let's get rid of this number of Nike. And let's go ahead under the chart tools, if you have your ch uh, chart selected under design, let's add our axis titles. And maybe there's an easier way to do this if we already have a format. Let's see, let's play around with it. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's do that. So I chose this layout right here, layout 10. It has your access titles already. I'm going to get rid of this number of Nike thing, and I'm going to stretch this out. I kind of like this grid here, but I'm not in love with it. So let's go to Add Chart Element, Grid Lines, and let's get rid of the minor horizontal and grid lines. Get rid of the minor vertical as well. I like that better. And let's stretch this out even more so we can see all the incomes there. There we go. So down here, you want to put annual income, okay, and then over here, number of Nike. And I'm going to put an S there, number of Nikes. Well, if we look at this and try to think about the nature of this relationship, you can kind of see, um, if you draw a circle around the plots, uh, it's pretty wide, right? If you had a strong relationship, you would expect to see something like this or like this, but that's not really the case here. This isn't even a moderate relationship because we can't tell the direction of the relationship. If we had a moderate positive relationship, it would kind of look like this, right? It's kind of spread out, but you can tell it's going upward. If we had a moderate negative relationship, it's kind of spread out, but you can tell it's going downward, but that's not the case here. There's really no relationship between how much people are making and how many pairs of Nikes that they have. So let's get rid of all this. Okay. 
So there's no need to do a regression here because there's not a relationship to begin with. Let's go ahead and pop this up here. And now let's look at a potential relationship between age and number of Nikes. So we are going to steal age. And if, here's a cool thing too. Um, if you're wanting to highlight multiple things, um, you can highlight this and hold down the control key click here and you highlight both. If you wanted to highlight everything in between, you could click here, hold the shift key and click there, but we don't want to do that. We just want to click here for age, hold down the control key, click here for number of Nikes, control C to copy, and let's scroll over a little bit and paste these right here. All right. And let's label this sheet real quick. It's bothering me. Age, income, Nike. All right. So in this case, I want age to be my kind of like predictor, my x axis. And I think that maybe older people are going to have more Nike because they've been around longer, right? They've been on the planet longer. They've been able to buy more Nikes over the course of time. So let's look to see if there's a relationship between age and number of Nikes. So again, we're going to highlight these two values. We're going to go up to insert. We're going to select the scatter. If you don't see all these options, if you have an older version of Office, you can just click on charts and then select the scatter chart. Here we go. And we're going to make some edits similar to what we did before. This time I'm just going to use the editor to do it. So I'm going to get rid of this number of Nike. Make sure design is selected under chart tools. Add chart element, horizontal, add chart element, vertical. Remember, our x axis was the first variable. So age, and then our y-axis represents the second variable there, the second column, number of Nikes. Well, unfortunately, yet again, we have a situation where eh, not much of a relationship happening there, right? It looks kind of like a shotgun blast. There's not really any clear pattern where age is related to how many Nikes somebody has. So we will not do a regression for that. All right, here's our last hope for a decent relationship. Let's look at the relationship between age and annual income. So let's just steal this, age and annual income. Control C to copy. Scooch on over here, Control V to paste. And then make sure that when you're pasting that you're pasting things in the top row here, row one. So now you're going to be a pro at this. You've already done this twice. Let's do it again. Why not? Insert our scatter. I'm going to scooch this one down here. Make our edits. Get rid of this. Add our chart elements under the design tab. Horizontal. Vertical. Here we have age, our first column that we selected. And here we have annual income. Great. Okay. Whoa, that looks like I spelled that wrong. Let's see. In come. That looks better. So weird that C and O go together. It looks strange. Whoa, what just happened? I hit enter and things went bonkers. I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. That was strange. Now we're back. Whew, that was scary. So in looking at this, um, I can see that there is actually a relationship, finally, because you can see that, for the most part, we've got an upward slope in our data points. It's not just completely scattered. I wouldn't call this a strong relationship if this was all of this, the dots we had and we didn't have these little weird anomalies, these outliers, then I would say, oh yeah, this is a strong relationship. But with these data points, it is a moderate relationship. So given that, I think that we should test the significance of this relationship. And then if it is significant, we'll go on to create a scatter diagram that has a regression line. And I'm also going to show you how to generate a regression equation using Microsoft Excel. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to create a whole new column or a whole new tab just looking at age and income. Because now that's all I'm interested in. So I'm going to highlight these, control um, C to copy or right click and select copy or click here, however you want to do it. New tab, paste it in and let's rename this age and income, REG for regression. 
All right, so I'm going to show you how to do a correlation, or sorry, a regression analysis in Excel. So the first thing you need to do is activate your data analysis tool pack. I already have mine. You see this little data analysis tab there. But typically, you don't. So if you go to the File tab, go down to Options. Then you want to select Advanced. Oh, no, Add-ins. There we go, Add-ins. Analysis tool pack, then click go. Make sure that analysis tool pack is selected and then click OK. And that will make this little data analysis tab pop up under the data tab up here. So under the data tab, let's click on data analysis and let's go to regression. Now it's worth noting that correlation is in here as well. And if you wanted to look at um, correlation between two variables for a ton of different variables at the same time, you could use this option, but it's not going to give you the significance of that or the regression information. But if you're just looking at one var two variables, you can do the regression option and you'll get the significance of that. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right, so the input Y. So Y is your outcome. So in this case, we think that age is going to predict annual income. So in this case, annual income is our dependent variable or our outcome or our Y. So click this and then select all this data. If you just click here, it's not going to work. So you have to actually select the data. So I'm going to go ahead and click the label and then go down to the bottom, hold down shift and click here and it highlights everything. Then for our X range, that's our independent variable or our predictor. And we think age is a predictor of annual income. So I'm going to click here and go down. Hold shift, click here, highlight all that. Make sure that this little box next to labels is checked that tells Excel that the top row is the labels, it's not numeric values that should be included in the analysis. And then here we're going to go to output range, make sure that's selected, click in this box, and then just click anywhere in your uh, sheet here. We'll ignore these for now, let's click OK. And let's do a couple things before we look at this. So while this is all selected, and if it's not, you can just select it again. Right click, format cells, number here, then go to number and let's round three decimal places. There we go. Well, it didn't really do what I wanted, did it? Oh yeah, it did. Okay, these are just huge numbers, my goodness. Let's also auto fit this, just highlight this. Go over to um, home, format, auto fit column width. So that makes everything fit really nicely. So there's only a couple of things that I want to draw your attention to. There's a lot going on here, but I'm going to stick to the bare essentials to make sense of this. So remember when we looked at the scatter diagram over here, and we're going to edit that scatter diagram here in a little bit, we saw that there was, you know, approximately a moderate relationship there. When we go here, we actually got the correlation coefficient right here. And this tells us that we do have a moderate relationship. So anything around a 0.3-ish is moderate. Anything around a 0.10 is weak. And anything around 0.50 to a 1 is considered strong. So this does confirm that we have a moderate relationship between those two things. Now let's focus on... Oh, this is our number of observations. There's 100 people on our data. It's always a good thing to check to make sure you didn't mess anything up. Now let's turn our attention to the significance of F. So whenever you have a finding that's statistically significant, that means that there's less than a 5% chance that this observed relationship is a fluke or just due to chance. So typically, we have something called an alpha level, and that's the um, how likely are we willing to accept a result that could be due to chance. So just to keep it simple, if this is less than 0 0.05 or 5% chance, that means there is less than a 5% chance that the observed relationship is false or due to error or really due to chance. 
So if your significance value is less than 0.05, that means it's highly unlikely that this relationship is a fluke. So we would call it significant. So again, a significant finding in statistics just means it's unlikely that your result is due to chance. In this case, um, it's, let's see if we can uh, look at the actual value, because it's rounded to the third decimal, so we don't get a C. Because you don't want to be thinking that that 0, .00 means there's no chance at all that the results are due to error. It just means it's a really low probability. So if we look at this, you can see that there's a 0 .00007 prob uh, probability that these results are due to a fluke. So I'm feeling good. This is a significant finding. With that, now we can move on to these coefficients here. It's important to note that if you don't have a significant finding, if this is greater than 0.05, then the regression doesn't matter. Because you don't want to make predictions based on a relationship that isn't even true or that's probably based on a fluke anyway. That would be bad practice. So we've confirmed that we have a moderate relationship based on the picture and based on this. We've confirmed that we have significant findings because this is less than 0.05. So now I want to show you how to generate a regression equation to make predictions about somebody's annual income based on their age. And then we'll end by adding the regression line that corresponds to that equation into the scatter diagram on the other tab. All right, so the way that a regression equation works is you have the predicted value of your dependent variable, or y, this is often notated as y hat, equals bx plus a, where b is the predicted change in y for each one point increase in x, or in this case we have over here the predicted income and then the predicted change in income for each one year increase in age. This you just leave it there. So this can be whatever value you want to plug into to make a prediction. So put any age you want to make a prediction. Then this A is your constant, or really it's your starting point. And in this example, and this is the starting point if x equals 0. So if you're a, uh, a fetus or a newborn, <laughs> if your age is 0, then um, your A is going to be like your starting income, like the baseline income. That's funny. All right, let's get rid of all this and actually make that equation. So now I want to show you where to find this stuff. So remember, we had y hat equals bx plus a. So this b, or the, predict the predicted change in annual income based on age, is right here. So for each additional year of life that you've had on this planet, you're expected or predicted to make an extra $441 a year. Then A, your constant, if you didn't have any age at all, sometimes it's kind of silly, the interpretation, then your starting point is going to be $12,302.49. So if we wrote a regression equation here, we would say predicted income equals 441.73, and I'm going to round to the hundreds here since we're dealing with money, times whatever age you want to plug in, plus your constant here of $12,000, well, it's $12,302.49. So for instance, let's do an example here. I'm going to have to delete this to start actually typing. So I'll show you how you can use Excel to kind of work that and make those predictions. So I want you to do this in your sheet as well. So let's make some predictions for different ages. So age equals, and let's just put like 20, 30, 40. And then over here, we're going to put predicted income. All right, so if we go here, 
let's get rid of this equals. It's bothering me. All right. Here for predicted income, we could do equals, then click on that B, hit F4 to lock it in. If you can't, just put a dollar sign in front of each one there, in front of the letter and the number, and then a star, and then click on the age. And let's go ahead and put brackets around that, just so the order of operations works in our favor. There we go. And then we are going to put plus and then click on our intercept and hit F4 or use the dollar signs to lock it in. Because for all of these, no matter which way we're looking at, these are the two values we want to be plugged in, but we want this J2 to then be a J3 and then a J4 using this formula that we're going to copy. Go ahead and hit enter. Then click here, go to the bottom right corner, click and drag down and magic happens, right? Look, check it out. So these are your predicted incomes. If you want to make this look more like money, you can right click here, go to format cells, currency, two decimal places, the symbol is a dollar, and there you have it. Now I just want to check to make sure something is happening. Because remember, we said that for every one point increase in age, we would expect that income would increase by this much. Well, since we have consistently 10 point increases in age here, let's see if it worked. So equals this times 10. So we would expect that there would be a $4,417 increase for each 10 point or 10 year increase in age. So let's take a look at this. Equals this, well actually, let's do this minus this check it out right so if for every one year you expect to make this much more for every 10 years you expect to make 10 times that and you see that the difference between these two is this amount and then if we do this the difference between these two that are based on ages that are 10 years apart works out to be that amount now this is more thorough than you probably need, but it's important to understand these tools because being able to make predictions with data is really a powerful thing. Now let's go ahead and add our scatter or our regression line that's based on this equation to our scatter diagram or our scatter chart. So let's go back here, click on your scatter diagram, go up to design, and let's add a trend line and let's add a linear trend line. Now check that out. Now let's confirm that our equation matches with our line. So if we're looking at our predictions here, for somebody who's 40, we predicted that they make about 30 grand. Let's go here. 40, go up to here, look at that line, right at about 30 grand. So if you wanted to plot one of these by hand, you could figure out an X value to plug in, plug it into your formula, get the predicted value, and then put a dot on your scatter plot. Then do another one and then connect the two dots. This works out perfectly with what we see here based on the equation. All right, so that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoy learning about scatter plots and correlation and regression and understand that this is a really, really useful tool for making predictions about the population or about the future when you don't have access to all of the information, which we usually don't, right? We usually have to take a sample and make inferences about populations.